be okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Da, 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 da. Welcome all to the Master Leong Show. Today we will talk about SUEs. Okay. So last Friday I talked about Hai Di Lao. So I, I, I hope you all enjoy my deep dive. So once in a while, off earning season, uh, I might do some uh, deep dive. But wow, now very fast. Going back into the US earnings season, I think this Friday the US banks will start to report. So for US market, I think I'm still very concerned about the banks, the financial system, whether the commercial real estate is affecting all these uh, US banks or not. Then for the US market, of course, the most important, the Magnificent 7 or minus Tesla, Magnificent 6 or whatever. So they continue to run up, but can their earnings, can their revenue sustain or not? So that's where I have the most concern for, for the US market. So, so that, that's where I will co- have my coverage. Or Tesla will report, I think, 24th or 23rd like that. Yeah, so, so we are going into the US earnings season. Also, welcome everyone. Or Ray Tan, welcome, welcome. Quan. Hi, ML. Wanted to bring your attention to AIA, which fell to 12-year lows. Might be interested to take a look. So, I actually uh, look at the AIA full-year results. I was considering whether to talk about it or not. But in the end, I choose not to. I, I, I afraid that I talk about it, then people will go in and buy. Because I realized that it's not cheap. It's about 1.8 to 2 times book value. So, although price-wise, it looks very cheap, very depressed. But valuation-wise... AIA, which is traded in the Hong Kong market, is not undervalued. I think it's a bit pricey. It's, it could be fairly priced for a great company. So insurance businesses like AIA, Prudential, Manulife, uh, so what they have is that they have a strong mode because they have a very big brand and people are very familiar with them. Like you go to any agent, likely you will buy a product it's from all these, all these names. So when people buy an insurance, right, they want to be assured that they will get paid out. They don't, will you buy an insurance, let's say, a 30 year term policy? Like if you get cancer or, or hospitalization plan, hospitalized, then they will make payout to you. From a new startup that only has uh, maybe 1,000 customers, you probably won't buy the insurance because you are not sure whether they will be around 20 or 30 years later. So, insurance, the mode is that all businesses go to all these major. Uh, insurance company so it's like an oligopoly only a few of these big names like like singapore insurance companies but what uh, ntuc income great eastern so so it, just just a handful of names only yeah so so insurance company the mode is very strong but but you don't want to overpay for it so i think aia could be fairly priced or overvalued i, I won't buy it la. whereas pingan to me uh, although it's china I, I i've not bought any china insurance from any china company before but because uh, I don't super fully understand the company because it's so huge. Or uh, on the bright side, it's diversified. But my margin of safety is that I'm getting Ping An at forty percent discount to book value, zero point six times book. Because of this huge margin of safety, I, I feel it's an easy buy. So so valuation matters more uh, in that sense. Oleg, welcome, welcome. Vincent Tong, Master Xiaomi seems good. Can cover Xiaomi. I do cover. Uh, uh, you can check back. I, I've covered Xiaomi quite a number of times. Yeah, the, the recent earnings I also got covered. You just search uh, Master Leong Xiaomi. So, Pixels Princess, Josh, uh, Josh Tan, uh, I think our Singapore YouTuber, bought Singapore stocks. Genting Singapore, Fraser Center Point Trust, Capital Escort, Caper DC. Wow, wow. <laughs> Thanks for your update. So, later after this, I'll go and check out his, his video. So, uh, just a brief of my own personal thinking, Genting Singapore, I don't like. Well, number one, the business is cyclical. It's linked to the uh, tourism. So Singapore is very heavy. I think about one, one fifth of, of our GDP directly or indirectly is linked to tourism. We depend on the Chinese tourists a lot. So same for Capital Escort. Capital Escort is a hotel hospitality asset reads. Uh, I mean, it means hotel assets. So they are cyclical in nature. So that during COVID, the lockdown, recession, or their earnings, their revenues will, will plunge. And now it's an up cycle, it's a recovery. So I think the recovery may or may not have been priced in. So, But I don't like cyclical industry. 
uh, capital escort is not a read that I want to buy because you will notice that let's say you pull out 10 or 20 year DPU, it could fluctuate a wildly. Example, like during the, the virus period, you will see DPU crashing by half. I prefer shop, uh, commercial assets uh, like shopping mall and office. More, more stability, especially office asset. Can think Singapore, I don't like uh, is because why? Because the founders tend to overpay themselves and, and they don't reward the shareholders so much. But now it's actually better because they pay a dividend. In the past, they don't even pay a dividend. So the bet is whether management will want to reward shareholders or not. So Genting Singapore, the asset is is very good. It's a dual poly. Basically, Singapore, there's only two casino. Am I right? Uh, Marina Bay Sands and Resort World Sentosa. So, so the, the casino is a crown jewel. Uh, high, high returns, but I say it's a bit cyclical. So Fraser Center Point Cable DC uh, read is both solid. It is a solid uh, blue chip uh, read. So later I'll talk about reads. Yeah, I, I have some material on, on, on mix. Uh, so Tiger Shark Lawrence Cox C W Y L Y welcome all. Good evening, good evening. S N G. Oh, like and share. J Lo Jojo. I love my country. Choki Lexus. Oh nip nip. ML, can you share your view on Parkway Life Read? Parkway Life Read is very high quality asset. It's a healthcare read. Mostly you're holding hospital asset. Parkway Life Read, I will never buy Parkway Life Read, but it's always trading at a premium to book value. The dividend yield is usually less than average because when people build a portfolio of reads, right, let me 20, 10 or 20 reads, you'll find that it's very easy to put in industrial, shopping mall, and uh, office read. But it's difficult to have special reads, like example, hotel assets, data center, and even hospital assets. So this kind of more niche asset like data center and hospitals, right? They tend to trade at a huge premium to book value. So you rarely get them at a discount. The only reason you want to buy Capital DC read or Parkway Life read is that you really hold 10 or 20 reads. You want diversification. Value for money, they are not value for money. They are, they are more for diversification purpose. That, that's how I will think of it. Nip, nip, it seems that market never respect BABA buyback. Yeah. Because BABA, the problem is that it's shareholding, uh, like 80-90% of the shareholding is retail investors. So now the retail interest for BABA is very low. That's why it cannot move. So 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 that's the problem. But, but I'm fine uh, as long as the coming results, they announce uh, $2 dividend or, or higher dividend, more share buybacks, then I'll, I'll, I'll be, be happy. Yeah, so Mr. Tokomi, it seems that rate cut isn't anytime soon. Yeah, later I'll talk about weeks, no, no worry. Uh, so, Boon, Mr. Tokoyomi, Sean Ho, Anantas, e -Cake, welcome, welcome. Straight trading was uh, $3, now dropped to $1 for this. Straight trading is also the same thing. Both Singapore, a lot of these companies, right, the founders have a major stake in the company. So when the company make a lot of money, they pay themselves big salary. They don't pay reward the shareholders with a good dividend. But in the end, how can you make money from the stock? The stock number one, capital gains. Number two, dividends. Capital gains is not quite clear you, you, you may or may not have capital gains. Dividends is more certain. Example, you pay fifty percent to hundred percent of your earnings out as dividend every year. So straight trading, the boss, the the, the madam are very. Oh, Chiu Bu, Chiu Bu. Oh, she, uh, she's very well known, but, but the thing is, she's very high profile. So a lot of people, retail investors follow her, invest, they believe that switch trading is undervalued. But I believe it's a value trap. La. It's a value trap mainly because of the management. In the end, you can buy companies that are very good asset, like a Genting or switch trading. Switch trading, the, the price asset is ARA, asset management, 20% stake. They also own a lot of property. But the, the problem is that if the management doesn't reward shareholder, then you cannot unlock value. So that's the problem. You can buy a undervalued company, but in the end, is the management serving your interest to help you unlock value? So one thing I like about Alibaba and JD is that you can see that they keep doing more dividend, more share buybacks. This, this is the one that is one of the best way to unlock value to, to shareholders. Also, Jared, Master Hope, you're feeling well. and Don't engage the trolls. Nowadays, I, I, I'm more strict already. I just did a wipe, but that means those that always talk caught very irritating one, I just block and hide. Also, then for my own mobile app, right? 
Oh, I, what I, like I tell you, uh, I'm seeing a psychologist. Uh, then I got ask her for some advice or this. So social media actually uh, amplifies our anxiety, our depression, or uh, gives us a negative loop. Yeah, so I uninstall a lot of my social media. My Instagram, uh, my TikTok, and my the trends. Uh, I've uninstalled these three uh, social media app and also Telegram. So to, to four lah. Uh, I install un uninstall four of my uh, social media apps. I'm only keeping YouTube and Facebook. These two only. Uh, YouTube is because it's basically my part time job. So I'm not gonna uninstall YouTube. So don't worry, master is here. But uh, when in my very down state, uh, I did contemplate. Uh, did, did consider quitting YouTube. Uh, and you have seen me quit and come back YouTube almost three times already. So don't be surprised if I suddenly quit YouTube. Uh, take a break for one month and come back again. Uh, that, that, that won't be something surprising. Uh. So social media can be toxic. Uh, yeah, so d don't be too addicted to social media. Then Facebook is because of my community. Uh, I, I'm in a cat community and a Buddhist community. Uh, but I don't talk about Buddhist community because religion is very sensitive. Everyone has a different religion. Uh, so so I don't promote my, promote my own religion. Uh, uh, so but cat tech community you see I share more la, like I, those who follow me on Facebook you see every day I, I post or uh, my, my videos of master or uh, playing with the cat or uh, yeah once in a while I will post that like, me I, I visit the temple but but the temple is got the dragon statue so so I I post a video of the dragon I say green dragon go ah uh, that, that type uh, if I keep so I don't, don't really post related to my religion one uh, of course some people might be turned off which I can understand, but as cat, 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 and stock market, it is more everyone can understand. The cat is cute, ma. Where, where got people who, who dislike cat? Yeah. So so Facebook, I use it to post my cat video, la, my, my personal life. Then YouTube is about the stock market. So so like the cat la, and and the stock market, these two is my passion, la. So I like sharing. Whereas everything else, I uninstall already. All, all other social media, I uninstall. Then now slowly, I think I'm feeling better. La. So it's a long road to recovery. Uh, not like snap, wow, then you don't have anxiety. No, uh, anxiety is a long-term thing. Uh. Then I slowly learn how to manage it. Uh, so, okay. Falling Star 08, oh, ML, deep dives are good. Hi, Dilao was great. Oh, thank you, thank you. Great that you all like my Hi, Dilao sharing. So, so those who are interested in a good consumer brand, as good as McDonald's, as good as uh, Starbucks, oh, then do check out the Hi, Dilao deep dive. The other consumer brand that I would like to do a deep dive is Luckin Coffee. But I went to take a look at Luckin Coffee. There's not much information because it has been delisted. It's a private company. It's traded OTC. There's also, it's more dangerous. But I'm really interested in Luckin Coffee because it's doing better than uh, Starbucks. So Luckin Coffee can only wait. Uh. Eventually, they will IPO in the Hong Kong market. Yeah, so let me talk. Uh, so let me start today sharing uh, 805 already. Let me start today sharing, then I'll come back uh, to chit chat with you all. So, some market update la, on the China market. Now, this I cover less about the US. Of course, I look at YouTube, so many people are covering the US market. So, so I talk about US market, no point. La. I think there are many more content creators that, that give update on the US market way better than me. So, this is not a, a strong point, and, and I don't have a need, I, I cannot differentiate. Whereas, China market, Hong Kong market, and even the Singapore market, not much coverage. So I'll focus more on the China market. Well, because China market really not much cover. And, and you don't see much news. And, and I'm able to read the Chinese news and explain to you all in English. So that's where I see the advantage. So, so this year, I'll cover more towards uh, China news. Then I talk a bit about US and Singapore market. Yeah, so Singapore market this earnings season, I'll talk a bit of about the blue chip reads. Then for the US earnings season, I'll talk more towards the banks and towards the, the tech companies. Yeah, these two areas. Yeah. Uh there, there are areas that people might ask me, Master, can you cover semiconductor like Intel, AMD, all this? To be honest, semiconductor not within my circle of competence. So I see how like if, if I feel that it's really interesting, I understand that I cover. If I don't have the confidence, I also don't want to smoke you all. Then, then I don't cover. Yeah, so, so, but mainly tech, la, tech. So I cover, right, it's also my own interest. If I really want to learn about the company, learn about the industry, then I'll be more interested to cover. Like the other time I covered 
last earning, uh, earning season I covered so five. So five was very interesting. Is that uh fintech? Yeah, so so if I have interest then then I will cover. But feel free to feedback to me la, like the earning season come, uh, which US companies you want me to cover in the coming earning season. So if a lot of people say so five, so five, I see ten people asking about so five, then I might cover so five, something like that. Yeah, so so sometimes uh, your, your feedback law and then you feedback to me then I might cover the company during a uh, earning season. No promises, uh, but if a lot of people asking about if example twenty people ask me to cover uh example Nike, Nike earnings, you all like Nike shoe, then I cover. Or oh, then I then I take a look. Uh, I say but okay. So uh Hong Kong market, China market. So uh last week we had the Qingming Jie. Qingming Jie is a holiday period, is those it's more a Chinese culture where people go and visit their ancestor, the, the, the tombstone to tidy things up, pay respect, uh, burn, burn things, uh, put some fruits, all this. Uh. So it's also a holiday period for, for China. So sometimes the people will not only uh, pay respect because it's one day, ma, then they take another day leave, then it's a long weekend or like three day or four day break like that. So they will also bring their kids uh, to go for holiday. So this Qingming so-called uh, three-day holiday period, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, so the, the numbers are actually quite good. More than 119 million domestic trips were locked during the three-day holiday ending Saturday, marking an increase of 11.5% compared to the pre-COVID period. So this is very good. Uh, this is very good. Yeah. So tourism is back, back already. Tourism, but but I feel that it's too late to to bet on tourism, <laughs> especially like, like hotel or this. But you want to bet on tourism, you must make an indirect bet. So revenues from domestic travel totaled fifty three point nine billion yuan. Oh, uh, so so that that's huge. Eh? 50, almost fifty four billion. Oh, uh, so that's like three days. Eh? so up twelve point seven percent. So if you are bullish on like tourism recovering, Chinese travelers, right? You want to bet on hotel, bet on airlines, it's a bit too late. This kind of assets is like double or triple. Example like uh, Singapore SIA already from $3 will go to $6 du double already then. Uh, in Hong Kong like Cathay Pacific, I think also du double already. So you must make indirect bet. That means companies that uh, their core business, example maybe Meituan, they do food delivery. But their sub business, they, their app, they allow booking of hotel, or uh, book, booking of air tickets, all this. So so their sub business, uh, they get a boom. Then example is example like, uh, consumer business. Example like I covered Hai Di Lao. Hai Di Lao not only in China, they also in uh, Asia countries also. So so you must make an indirect bet. Oh, but the boss, the pure tourism stocks already run up already. So Hong Kong and Macau remain the top destination for mainland travelers. So now the, the Chinese travelers, they are free to travel due to reopening. So they are not traveling far. They are not going to US. They are not going to Europe. Or they, they worry of their safety. They worry of the decoupling. So Asia is booming. Hong Kong, Macau, the, the casinos in Macau. Or record. So now it's also too late uh, to, to bet on the casino stocks. Genting, I don't know. I have to take a, another look. I don't know what's their PE ratio or this. Then, uh... For consumer spending in Bangkok, KL, Tokyo were also uh, popular. So Ch Ch Chinese travelers, they, they, a lot of them, they are also coming to Singapore. Singapore was the Taylor Swift concert. Eh? So now they are done with Singapore, now they go Thailand. So among all these countries, right, I, I, I like the Bangkok the most, Thailand, Thailand. I have a biasness uh, because I really like, like Thailand. Or eat tom yum, uh, eat the tiger prawn, uh, then go massage, uh, smoke weed, uh, no, no, I, I mean, uh, go and drink th uh, chang beer. Uh. Well, so it, it is very pleasurable, even be it male or female. Male, you go there is to sin, uh, to, to drink and to smoke. Uh. Then, then for, for female, you go Thailand is to shop, uh, to massage, uh, pedicure, medicure. Uh, so, so it's very, very good spot uh, and it's very uh, value for money as a as a to, to, tourism spot so I, I like bangkok the most and bangkok has been very suppressed their economy due to the the, the three-year covid uh lockdowns and such so i think thailand can have a strong recovery if if the chinese tourists or this year the trend is the chinese tourists start coming in then i think 
Thailand the the, the economy can really recover. So for China, right, even the box office, the, the movie sales is very good. Three day holidays also brought a windfall for entertainment sector. The total box office reaching a total of 850 million yuan. So one thing I like about shopping mall asset. So today I talk a lot about REITs. So REITs, right, is less about retail. Am I right? Or nowadays we buy things, we buy online. Like Chinese folks, they buy Taobao, Pinduoduo, or Jingdong. Then Singaporeans, we buy is the Shopee or Lazada. So when we go to shopping mall, it's more like a family thing. Saturday, Sunday, what are you going to do? Nothing to do, ma. go shopping mall. And nowadays the weather is so hot. You want to get the air con. Then what your kids want? Your kids want to watch Frozen 2, want to watch Disney movie. Then you'll bring your kids to, to the cinema. So shopping mall is more of entertainment after you finish your your movie then you bring your kids want to eat what want to eat ting tai fong want to eat hai di lao or, or go to the tuition center so shopping mall is entertainment tuition enrichment and also f and b so shopping malls will never be gone case one there will always be a use for shopping mall just that it is slowly shifting really in the past shopping mall it was 80 percent retail 20% service. Now shopping malls is 50% service, 50% retail. And give it another 5-10 years, shopping mall will probably be 80% service, like, like, like the those that I mentioned. So that's why I like to be a, a, a landlord. Or if I own, uh, example, Link Reads, or if I own a Capital Mall Trust, all these uh, cinema operators, la, or all these uh, food court, la, all these high lao, they have to pay me rental. I'm bao jia. Oh, that's why it's, it's, it's uh, good to be a, a re owner. But like I say, uh, nothing wrong to be a landlord, nothing wrong to be a business owner, to own the high lao, or to own the shopping mall. In the end, the, the risk reward both is different. You must uh, buy the one that you understand and you feel comfortable with. So, Chinese folks nowadays, they are not buying property, they are not buying stocks. What are they buying? They are buying gold, gold, but gold is also stocks. Ah. And physical gold, like I sh the other thing I shared with you is a lot of scam. So they, they cannot burn really. Uh, some of the those uh, gold that they buy is not 100% gold, but makes other matter. So now the, the safest one is to buy ETF. So ETF, wow, the volume is, is insane. So this uh, China AMC gold industry equity ETF, today uh, morning got trading hot. So the fund, the premium over its underlying NAV, right, increased more than 30%. So maybe the NAV is $1, but it trades at $1.30 because there's so much demand. Yeah, so uh, over the last four trading sessions, it gained almost 40%. Well, where gold, gold, eh, physical gold, eh, this is not Bitcoin, eh, this is physical gold. Eh. Up for this, but then it fell 10% today. So it really, really, you see, $1.20, it really to $1.75, then today crash. So gold price usually doesn't move so much, usually up 1% to 3%. Gold is usually very defensive. It's not so volatile. But but in China, there's a discrepancy because China, right, the investors, what they hold, the currency they hold is renminbi, Chinese yuan. Chinese yuan, uh, they can only spend it in, in, in mainland. Then they don't want to buy property, they don't want to buy stocks. So they cannot invest it overseas, uh, let's say to convert it to US dollar to buy US ETF. Uh, RMB is a restricted currency. Like in China, right, if you are a common folk, right, you can only exchange 10,000 to 20,000 RMB into US dollar so that you can go holiday. This is for holiday purposes only. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so they have, now the problem is Chinese folks, they have a lot of RMB in hand if they put it in fixed deposit the interest is very low at one to two percent so so that's why all is rushing in or to physical gold or, or gold etf so i believe eventually the sentiments uh will, will turn once they realize that the market has stabilized the worst is over and it goes into a bull market then the cash will come into the the stock market now the 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 hong kong market the china market is stabilized you see it's not crashing even when the market is down, it's like down 1% only. You don't see the uh, Alibaba, Ping An down 5-10%. Gone are those days already. When it's down a lot, bargain hunters come in, the China national team come in, and it's, the stock price is also supported by the dividend yield, the share buybacks. Yeah, so I think 
especially the first half of this year, or it is a good time for accumulation. The Hong Kong market feels more like a consolidation period. When will it rocket? I don't know. It can be the second half of this year. It could be next year. But I, I'm still a buyer. Every month, I'll be BCA. So one of the worries is the property market. So uh, Si Mao Group, Si Mao Ji Tuan, or Ji Ba Bom. So it has already defaulted on, on their bonds. So a lot of these uh, blue chip, uh, large China property developers has already suspended their interest payment for their bonds already and they have been undergoing restructuring like Country Garden, uh, China Evergrande, uh, all this. Then we see that one by one, right, uh, the, the investors are losing patience. Uh, uh, so like, like the Sima Group, they wanted to do a restructure, they talk, 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 talk for two years already, still haven't restructured. So like they urge their offshore creditor to carefully consider the restructuring plan put forward. Or got four options uh, like short term, long term, or this so we don't know the details of the plan. But but now the, the debt holders they are frustrated. Uh, you discuss, discuss, I uh, yeah, just liquidate you, I uh, go to hell. Uh. Just liquidate you, uh, I just sell everything. Uh. So troubled developer uh Simao group holdings is facing a liquidation suit brought by CCB or uh, uh, so China Construction Bank, not Variety, uh. also Oh, it's very rare to see a state-owned bank uh, take this kind of initiative because a uh, Simao Group itself right, is also a state-owned property builder. So it must feel that uh, this one is gone case already. Uh. So don't talk so much. Just sell all your asset. Then whatever is left that I get back a bit of, a bit of my money. So is this a worry for, for the stock market? My answer is no. Uh. Like I mentioned, uh, let's say of the top 100 property developers, Half of them they were rescued or they are under the white list. The other half they are not in the white list, right? Means they are gone case already. So the the other half, right? Let's say for equity, their stock prices is down like 90-95%. Their bond prices is down like 80%. Or well, from one dollar it dropped until 10 cents, 20 cents already. So there is no longer any more downside when they are already down 80 to 95%. Nothing to be sold further, so cannot crash already. So people who see this kind of negative property news, they think that the Hong Kong market will crash further. Eh, but you see, eh, the Hansen index is, did not crash right? because already crashed ninety to uh, eighty to ninety five percent already. All these property deals, so cannot crash any more further. Yeah, so 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 I, I'm not worried lah. The market has already priced them as gone cash already, ten cent to to the dollar. So now a lot of this news is mostly uh how to pay pay back. The debt holders like like they go into liquidation, maybe the creditors can get uh ten cent back on on the dollar. So over the next uh one to even three years uh, you you see all their assets are uh, slowly being uh sold away. So the big uncertainty now is rather who will be the buyer of China Evergrande, which is gonna liquidate sell all these assets, then Simao, Country Garden, who is gonna buy their portfolio? So. My personal belief is, is that eventually the, the state right will buy it. They will uh, inject capital into a fund or, or maybe a state-owned fund. And a state-owned fund will buy out all these property asset. Number one, what they're going to do is that they can inject capital. Money is very cheap. Ma the borrowing cost is maybe just 3% only from the government. Of course, interest rate. So you borrow at 3%, then your fund buy out all these distressed asset. Once you have all this distressed asset, right? What you do? You can be a landlord. Then you just rent it out. You collect the rental. Then the rental is more than the, the interest cost. So uh, I think that will be the end game. Uh, that's what I see. So I give you an example. So we saw the Wang Ke, Van Ke, uh, V A N K, Wang Ke, uh, also Gong Case one. So Wang Ke has been selling that asset. So I, I, I covered Lim Rich, right? But I did not update your. So, so uh, the few months ago, Lim Rich bought a 50% stake in the Wang Ke shop, shopping mall. So their gearing went from 18% to 20%. So do you know what is the net property income that uh, Lingwitz is buying from Wangke? 10% yield. Eh. It, it was it's buying the property at so 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 cheap uh, at, at like a 50% uh, discount like that. So you're getting 10% net net property yield. So now all this all this asset uh, be like shopping mall or even residential asset or even office asset. The uh, it's ridiculously cheap uh, because prices is already down like 30% in, in China. So now it's a fire sale. 
Because the lower the price, the higher your yield. So you actually want to be a buyer. And, and if the government is wise, they will inject fund and use the state-owned fund to buy all these fire sale asset. So, so that's my thinking. And, and the downside is very limited. The downside is very limited because you are getting 10% yield and you can borrow at 3%. How to lose money? Unless, unless the shopping mall you buy already, then it's not built well. Lah. The shopping mall collapsed. Or then that's the different thing. But before you buy a shopping mall, you will get a professional team to, to check whether the structure, everything is, is, is functional, everything is correct or not. Am I right? <laughs> so, okay, next we have the uh, our Chinese tech company, some news update. So Alibaba, wow, price war, very fierce. Uh. So cloud, right, feels more and more like the EV industry. Cut, 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 cut prices. It's very juan, uh, very competitive. So the other time they cut their prices was the China market. Now they are cutting the prices in the global international market. From US to Singapore, prices are cut as much as 59%. So today, Monday, they, uh, they slashed their prices by average of 23% for around 500 cloud uh, products. Oh, so, so that's a lot. So available to customers in 13 regions, including Japan, Indonesia, United Arabs and Germany. So their international business, they are competing very aggressively. So this is what I found on, on, on Twitter. You see like compute, 30% discount. Storage, 59% discount. So Alibaba is changing their strategy. In the Under the Daniel Zhang, they keep focusing on profitability. On that low margin contracts, they, they give it up. Then they try to turn profitable. Because of this strategy, the competitors eat up their market share. So for 2023, Independent report says that the China cloud market actually grew at 19%. So China continues to digitalize. So the cloud as a whole is growing at 19%. But this growth uh, is going to different areas. So Tencent and Alibaba did not grow. Tencent, Alibaba, by two, their cloud growth was single digit. So where did all the growth go? It go to state-owned back cloud providers like Huawei, China Mobile. China Telco, they saw like 50, 5 zero, 50 percent growth. Whereas <laughs> Alibaba, Tencent by two, like what, two to five percent growth. So the the growth is unbalanced. One is is due to government policy la, because government mandate that state owned enterprises and related have to go on the quality yuan. Uh, that means which must give their business to also state owned related like Huawei and China Mobile. So I did I did cover China Mobile before. Can check out my channel mobile data. I think it's it's a very good company, but but it's not undervalued. It is a uh, fairly price. So Alibaba, right? Because of this, right? They they change their strategy. Instead of attacking those big enterprises, right? They are now attacking the SME and the individual uh, consumer. Also, and what what do they use? They use all these basic functions. No? Example. So their strategy is a bit like Google like that. Uh, alphabet, alphabet like Google Cloud, or you use you store store your email uh, uh then you use uh, uh so it's uh more like SME la. For me to be honest, right, I'm not an expert in cloud. But you see, compute storage network, I don't know the details of of all these products. Like you see, as Asara D, uh, database for I also don't know what is uh, as Asara. You ask me, I don't know. So I only know database is that example you are. Uh, uh, company now you have a lot of data. Example, I'm the let's say high I'm an FMB uh, business. Or I need to have uh, all my financial data, all my the inventory data stored in the server. So so that that's a database, and I able to tap into my database and and manage my my my, my data. So example, what is big data? Big data means example different restaurants will require different amount of inventory. Oh, cannot be every restaurant you put like 10 kg of, of pork, 10 kg of beef, 10 k, uh, then like 100 eggs, then uh, how many kg of vegetables. Every store, right, your inventory should be different because you every day you sell, you know, that you, like you, one store you might sell uh, 10 eggs, another store you might sell 50 eggs. So then there's repeated customer, there's a trend. So every store your inventory will be different. You need to stock up the store with different amount of ingredients. So that is data analysis. That that's a uh, big data that you need to analyze. So uh, like network, uh, network is like, example you you have a lot of different uh, shops. Uh, you have 
50 or 100 different outlets. So whether all these outlets, can they link to a one main system? Example, your, your, your uh, tally, your, um, your inventory, uh, tally, your, 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 your accounting, how much cash in the shop, what is the sales data? Oh, so th things like that. Uh. So, so that, that's my basic understanding. Uh. But, but in the actual fact, how the Alicup, the product work, uh, I don't know because I've never used Alicup before. So I also don't know, but, but I just have a rough idea. So the problem with Alibaba, right, what I mentioned all these things, right, it feels like a commodity that not only Alibaba can do. So when it feels like a commodity, right, it becomes like a, a price war, like, like EV like that. EV now is like I buy the car as long as it looks good, it serves the function, the cheapest one I, I will buy. Or if you tell me that the Xiaomi car, or is that it's as good as Tesla, but 30% deeper, cheaper, then I'll buy the Xiaomi car. So Ali Cloud, right, uh, who are his competitors? Is that Tencent Cloud, la, JD Cloud, la, Baidu Cloud, la, and even uh, ByteDance Cloud. Also, uh, how are they going to differentiate? Very, dif very difficult to differentiate. So now they are competing more towards pricing or to provide all these uh, small companies. So the near term strategy, right, is burn money to capture market share. So how to become profitable? The profitability will only come maybe two, three years later when the small business becomes a big business or from a 1,000 employee become have 10,000 employee. So their database will be huge. For right? example, in the beginning when I sign up with Alicard, I only have 10, 10 outlets. But after two, three years later, I expand on to have 300 outlets. So once I have 300 outlets, it means what? I'm using more cloud data from Alicard. As the business grow, I will use more data, I will use more service. Then Alibaba, the revenues will also grow. Then the profitability part right, is in the stickiness. So when I, as an SME, I go from 10 store to 300 store, right? Then once I have 300 store and, and all my 300 store is really using Alibaba Cup, suddenly, example, JD come, hey, I will offer you 20% discount. You move all your data to my JD Cup. Will you move all your data? The answer is no, right? I have 300 store, right? I have so much data, right? it's so tedious to move everything to a new system, even you give me a 20% discount. And, and all my staff right, is already trained to use your system, your interface. So that's the stickiness. So what uh, all these cloud players are doing now right, is to burn money, capture the user base. So I lose money first. But once you grow from 10 store to 300 store, I will gradually raise my price. So you understand? Huh? So in the beginning, so what does this translate? This translates to the Alibaba cloud, their financial numbers. So in the coming work year, the losses will, will widen hugely. It will be a, suddenly the, the losses will spike. But it's okay because the core e-commerce business is a super cash cow. So as a group wise, right, you won't feel the impact, impact from the losses. It can tank the losses. The, the positive is that the revenues should, should grow. Lah. So I expect at least 5 to 10% revenue growth. Uh, if, if you are doing such aggressive price war, your, your revenue should explode. But everybody should sign up with Alicup. What is clearly the, the, the lowest cost provider. Yeah, so revenue should grow 5 to 10%. Then losses will, will, will widen. Then do expect Alicup to be loss making uh, for the next 2 to 3 years. Then as, as the customer become big, then they have more pricing power, then they turn profitable. That, that's how I will look at it. Yeah, so if you understand the business, like how I explained to you, then you won't panic because you know the fundamentals. You know how does this business work? People who don't understand will say, Ay, yeah, Alibaba gone case, uh, cut price, uh, cut business gone case. Sell, 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 get out, uh, gone case already. Huh? So if you don't understand, you don't have the conviction, you will paper hand your and sell. But master is here to, to tell you how, how the explain how the business work, how the fundamentals work so that you have the confidence to to hold on. So uh, uh, today, the cut executive of Alibaba said that they cut a one-year data storage package among small businesses from uh, $63 to $16.99. Wow, so that's very cheap. Lah. So uh, they are definitely burning money to capture market share. So another thing with uh, Alibaba right, is that they not only have the cloud business, they have other AI businesses, AI tools that they can upsell. So one of their business that I mentioned before is ThinkTalk. ThinkTalk is a mix of like Salesforce, Zoom, all this one. 
with, with the thing talk right all your employees can be on TikTok. you can chit chat with them then you can also share data with them you can manage your sales manage your inventory then, then they charge a fee so so now i think uh they are changing their strategy yeah it, cloud business we burn money is okay we capture market share then we try to upsell uh, other products uh, to this sme also then a lot of sme right the thing is that most sme right they are selling a physical product am i right well you there are more businesses that sell a physical product that are, than businesses that sell a digital product yeah so so if they are selling a physical product then you can upsell uh your, your taobao or your, your tmao platform that they can use then it's more synergistics so so we see so ali cloud is more to support uh businesses like taobao and the thing talk so so that will be the thinking also so for JD, so JD is gonna partner Lenovo. Lenovo is also a blue chip company. It's listed in the Hong Kong Exchange. It's also in within the Hang Seng Index. But for me, I, I don't like hardware companies that are like Lenovo, Sunny Optics, Xiaomi, all this. I, I usually I, I prefer a tech business, uh, a a set like platform businesses, than 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 a set heavy hardware businesses. So Lenovo is actually a also a very good company. Or oh, you all got interest, I, I might talk about it in, in the future. I will take a look at their full year results. Uh. So Lenovo it used to be a US company, but they, they sell it to, to, to uh, a Chinese uh, owner. Also now it's, it's, it's uh, Chinese owned. I myself, my, my, my current laptop that I'm using to stream is a Lenovo ThinkPad. I, I bought it 1,500. 1,500, I can do everything. I can play game, I can do live stream, I can watch YouTube. I can watch Japanese action video. I can satisfy all my needs all for, for a laptop. So it's very good, very value for money. So I really like the Lenovo uh, brand. Also, uh, the two Hong Kong listed partners are now targeting 120 billion yuan. Also, that's a lot. That's a of in sales over the next or next three years. So even next three years is like 40 billion of sales per year. That's a lot. So, like I mentioned, JD right is the number one online seller of electronics and consumer appliances. More than half of their revenues comes from all these electronics device. So, Lenovo uh, partner with JD is a very logical choice. Uh, because when people go to JD platform, right, there are so many uh, laptop brands. Uh, which brand should they buy? So, JD can, can push uh, Lenovo laptop more and, and earn a better commission. So it's a win-win situation because Lenovo is also one of the, the market leader. So what uh, that total will be double of the three year 60 billion goal that they have set in 2019, which was successfully completed. Also now they are double. So they partnered before and now they are doubling the goal from 60 billion to 120 billion. So this is a good sign. It means that what? It means that JD will continue to grow. As long as their partner is growing, as long as, as, long as Lenovo is selling more laptop, Xiaomi is selling more phones, Huawei is selling more. Then JD will, will also earn more commission. Of course, JD is basically an electronics seller online. Yeah, so I still like the JD business, uh, but you don't expect JD 10-20% huh, revenue growth. Uh, I still think that JD is more like single digit growth. It's more like an online retailer. So their growth right, will be more in line with the GDP. As I'm about China GDP is growing at 5%. So, so people will consume 5% more electronic devices. It, it, it's hard to imagine people buying like, like a mobile phone every month, am I right? So every, or a laptop every month. People buy a smartphone, buy a laptop, it's like once a year kind of thing. Yeah, so the growth is limited. So I think JD more towards 5% growth. But it's undervalued because of the cash in the balance sheet and, and the cash flow. So JD, I think the business is still very solid. Example, People say, oh, Pink Toto will destroy JD. Then you, why you never see news that uh, Lenovo partner with Pink Toto? The problem is if you go Pink Toto, you search for Lenovo laptop, you search for iPhone or on the Pink Toto, your search result is not an iPhone. Your search result at the first time is not a Lenovo. It's going to be some uh, random brand one. It's a third party brand. It's not Lenovo, maybe. Nino no, Nino no, or maybe no 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 brand or Novovo brand laptop. Then the Novovo brand laptop is half the price. Instead of one thousand five hundred, it's just five hundred dollar. It looks like a Lenovo laptop, but it's one third the price. But the name is called Novovo. 
or that and it's sold on Pink Toto. You dare to buy or not? That there are people who dare to buy lah because it's wanted the price. Then then they they buy and try lor. So so people who are very cost cautious, they will go to Pink Toto. People who want the real new Novo laptop, they want the real iPhone, they will go to JD. So that's why JD that I showed you all, over the past four years, it still has a twenty percent market share in the China e-commerce. It did not lose any market share. So I'm not worried. So once you understand the business model, then you have the conviction. Yeah. So last part, talk about uh Singapore as reads. So, so Singapore reads ah. So this for for my sixty percent Singapore viewers. So a lot of people right. Oh, well, I saw like the investing note lah and the hardware zone forum. People are not buying reads. Eh. Everybody go and buy banks. Ah. Oh my god. Oh no. I have. I, I see people say, "What DBS thirty five dollar? Jia 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 thirty six dollar? Jia jia jia!" I, I, I cannot save everyone. Ah, people who go and jia 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 the DBS at thirty five thirty six. Ah, they are not getting a good deal. Ah, ah, they they are buying DBS at a, at an overpriced. Ah, they they are paying about one point five times book for for DBS. Whereas, why why you want to pay one point five times book for DBS? Look at the China Bank. I remember the ICBC. I see BC is trading at zero point four times book, Ping An is trading at zero point six times book. Why you want to pay one point five times book for DBS? I rather you pay one times book for for maybe like Bank of America. So Singapore banks right are very overvalued. They are trading at a big premium to to book value. But the thing with retail investors right, they are herd mentality. They are more comfortable buying stocks that are going up. They they are comfortable buying banks because banks is going up. AK seventy one say DBS very good, so everybody follow to buy. Whereas REITs, right? We look at the ten year chart. The it peaked at one thousand four hundred fifty level. Now it's down a forty percent from the peak, and and it's trading near the one thousand dollar level. It's down forty percent from the peak. So obviously REITs looks very cheap, and it's near the bottom ah、uh, based on price. But how cheap is cheap? In the end, we look at fundamentals. So for the S three sector, right, is trading at almost twenty percent discount to its longer term price to book ratio. So REITs is a very asset heavy business. Same for banks. Banks and REITs are they are dinosaur business and they are asset heavy, or because you own a physical property, be a shopping mall, a industrial asset, or even an office uh building. So it's a pure it's a pure asset play. So you can see from the the chart here, right. The lowest that it went over the past decade was zero point eight five book value, fifteen percent discount to book value is the lowest you can get, and that was during the two zero two zero COVID peak fear where where we saw a very sharp sell sell down, uh because shopping malls was was shut down you cannot go to the shopping mall then shopping malls got got sold down, so COVID lows was zero point eight five price to book so zero point eight five price to book you can go all in. But oh yeah, of course it's the cheapest already. But all in, of course not individual lah. Buying the but the index, so the I H S R E index, oh, which consists of, uh, I think thirty uh Singapore uh blue chip and and mid cap REITs ah, is currently trading at a price to book value of zero point eight seven times. So based on book value, we are very low. We are we are near near the 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 lows already. So against the index five year average price to book of. One point oh four times, so on average we trade at a premium, about a four percent premium to book. Now we are trading at a thirteen percent discount to book. So over a longer trading period, going back to two zero one six, based on the available data, the S three sector is now trading at one standard deviation, or eighteen percent discount to historical uh price to book. Ah, so standard deviation is just like a statistical measure, like the 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 middle is here, then. One uh uh SD right is here, so two SD the probability is lower, and then three SD is super super low probability. So usually if it's one or two standard deviation discount to the historical average, is a very good discount. I I I would say, yeah. So for I reads right this ETF right we look at the top ten uh largest uh weightage. Also, the the lowest rated is Capital Reit four percent. The largest is uh CICT. The Reit that I recommend CFA right. Oh, their their top weightage is Ling Reits. Oh, yes, yes, Hong Kong, yes, India assets. But for the IH right, it's because it's the S Reit index. It's all all pure Singapore listed Reits only. 
Yeah, so inside this uh, top 10, you will see four of my five Tiger General, CICT, MPACT, FCT, and Kepa Reed. Or Suntech Reed is not top 10, uh, maybe number 12 or number 13. Or the market cap is, is a bit uh, smaller. So what you notice about the four uh, of the five Tiger General that is highlighted in red is that they are all trading at a discount to book value. So CICT and FCT, right, they are holding more well because of the, they have a very strong Singapore base of asset. So they are only trading at 7% discount to book value. And like for FCT, it's purely shopping more. So it's holding up very well. And both of them, they were able to maintain their DPU for work year 2023. So 5.5, they are trading at 5.5% dividend yield. Very solid. Yeah, so they did not trade at a, a huge discount. But still, the 7% discount is attractive. So the one that is trading at a super attractive valuation is MPACT. Or a trading at 23% discount to book value with 6.6% .6 dividend yield. Why? Because it has exposure to Hong Kong and China. So I think about one third of their asset uh, is from China and Hong Kong. That's why people are so fearful. They believe that Hong Kong and China is uninvestable. But, but I disagree. So among the five Tiger General, I think the most value for money is MPACT. So you can see that their current price to book discount right, is a five-year average, 30% discount to the five. So I think MPACT is the most undervalued. If you take a gun point at me, I, I must buy only one, then I will buy MPACT. Uh, if I am forced to buy only one, but it makes no sense to buy only one. Nowadays, the commission is so cheap. Like I myself, I use Tiger Broker. $2 commission only to, to DCA the REITs. So don't buy only one REITs. Uh, buy at least five REITs. Uh. Minimum, if you want to buy REITs, minimum buy five REITs. Otherwise, you buy the ETF. Like I'm, I'm buying CFA. Or CFA immediately inside there is 30, 40 REITs in the ETF. So uh, buy, buy CFA or, or buy five or 10 or even 20 different REITs. So uh, the other one that is heavily discounted is the uh, Kepa REIT. Kepa REIT, oh, you see, what 34% discount to book value and also it's a 17 discount to the five-year average. So Kepa REIT, the, the problem is the worry of the interest rate uh, because their asset is so high quality, like, like the marina, uh, uh, one, one marina, then there's also all the CBD area, uh, the Raffles Quay, uh, so, so, and Marina Bay Financial Center. So for them, right, this kind of asset, right, because they are so high quality, right, their cap rate is like 3.5% like that. That means the, the property example is worth 10 million, but only generates uh, 3 million of, of rental. So so that's called the cap rate. Like your your uh, property net income against, uh, against uh, your, your uh, property value. So the problem is that if you're borrowing cost, right, like now the, the SORA is like 3.6%. So if you're borrowing at 3.6, 3.8%, but you're collecting 3.5% rent, so you actually lose, uh, your, your, your U is actually negative. So the gearing hit, hurts uh, Kepa REIT. It hurts the cap, Kepa REIT. So, so some of these uh, office assets like Kepa REIT and Suntech REIT, uh, they are unpopular or be because of this. Yeah. But for me, right, I think the interest rate cost is a short-term issue. That means eventually the borrowing cost will normalize. It won't be like the US rates, it won't be at 5.25% for 5-10 years or maybe uh, but by year end it's going to be down a bit then next year is down a bit more same for the SORA so uh, short term is negative uh, but, but medium long term should the borrowing cost will normalize so those highlighted in green right uh, you, you see in green they are the industrial risk or like ascenders risk uh, uh, maple logistics maple industrial and cable DC risk so master me right i don't like industrial assets if, if i have to stock pick uh reads right i won't buy industrial reads because industrial reads right number one like i mentioned before their lifespan right the lease normally is 30 years whereas for commercial reads the lease is usually 99 years so when you are leasing for 30 years right your you your property you is generally higher or instead of let's say an office building can give you maybe uh, 3 to 5% uh, net property income. Whereas for the industrial risk, right, it can be 6 to 8%. The U is higher because the asset lifespan is slower. So when I buy industrial risk, right, I want the U to be higher 
or maybe six uh, to eight percent, then I will consider industrial REITs. But because Singapore market, right, people are so hungry for dividend, so you notice that all these industrial REITs they usually trade at a yield that is similar to to the rest. But because of this, they pay a premium to book value. So you can see that the Asander's REIT is one point two times book value. In Maple Industrial, one point one eight times. So they are trading at ten to twenty percent premium to book value. Then even Cable DC REIT is uh, 1.2, 1, uh, 27% premium to book value. So I don't like industrial REIT. I don't like to pay premium. If I buy, because I'm a value investor, if I buy something, I want it to be a great company, a great asset, but at a discount, at, at a good price. So I don't think industrial uh, REITs are, are selling at a good price. But I'm willing to buy, let's say, CFA, the index, because as a whole basket, that inside got industrial, there's shopping mall and there's office asset. As a basket, they are trading at a discount. Oh, but if we only look at industrial assets, they are not trading at, at a discount. Yeah, so I, I don't like industrial assets. Yeah. So one of it that is more uh, special la, is that the Fraser Logistics Commercial Trust. So this one is a bit mixed because it owns logistic assets. It also owns office assets. They, they actually merge uh, FLT and F, 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 C, o, o, T together. So it's very confusing. But the market is valuing it right? more like an office asset. So, so it's trading at a discount. So, so, but, but this is, is not the, it doesn't have blue chip status. Uh. It's not in the index. So, I think it's in the index. Uh. I think it's in the, it's, it's got blue chip. I think it's in, in the index. Yeah. It has blue chip status. Uh. Yeah. So uh, I think it, it, it's okay. But, but like I said, uh, I, don't, I don't like industrial asset. But the thing is, the industrial asset, I think, is in Australia. Australia should be freehold, freehold, if I'm not wrong. So I've not studied it much. Uh. If it's the Australia logistic asset freehold, then I think it is okay. But, but I do not know enough to comment on this read. Yeah, but I just know that it's uh, logistics and, and uh, office asset. So it's a bit more so-called weird. It's, it's a bit more weird. Then the other one, like Capital Land Escort Trust, uh, is trading at a discount so i think someone mentioned that joss tan is buying so this is also okay it's a blue chip company under capital land brand uh good track record very high yield of uh 6.8 percent but uh, it has a very strong correlation to the tourism because it's hotel asset so like during 2020 you see the dpu can crash by half one so it's very cyclical in nature so i don't like yeah so so my bias is towards the Five Tiger General lah. So I explain why I don't like industrial assets, why I don't like hospitality asset. Yeah, but overall, uh, it's still your preference ah. Just like wheat, right? It's like chicken rice, duck rice, laksa, lor mee, wonton mee. Oh, it's all all different dishes. Oh, eat the dish that you like ah. I, I like chicken rice. Then I only eat chicken rice. I, I don't eat noodle. I only like rice. I eat rice. I don't eat noodle. But you you like all, then you eat, eat different one ah. You all mix mix together. No, then you. But uh, to mix together, you might as well buy the ETF, am I right? Don't have to headache, just buy CFA. And CFA, you can, can use uh, CPF ordinary account to buy. Also, so CFA is the, is the ETF you want to look at. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for tonight. I hope you all enjoy, master the storytelling. So chit chat you all a bit, then I go offline. Okay, so totally, uh, Jaden, welcome, welcome. Chong Costa. Jeff Lu. Oh, seems like a lot of you all like 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 uh like to me to cover about the reads ah. Jeff Lu, CFA still can buy. CFA still very cheap ah. CFA now is uh, like the super lows eh. CLA is, is dragged down because of their so called Hong Kong exposure link reads ah. Because uh CFA right, uh it actually dropped more than the 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 like you compare the CFA chart to the. Uh, IH S3 index right the CFA actually dropped more because they have the linguist linguist is now uh, number two linguist is supposed to be the biggest reads now now it's number two <laughs> yeah because linguist is 75 uh, percent of the assets is, is in Hong Kong so you look at uh, CFA right you see what wow, from one dollar thirty all the way drop drop down then now it's it's uh, going close to the October lows already I don't think it will go uh below 75 because uh 75 is already the most pessimistic in, in regards to the interest rate outlook so my view is that uh the fed this year is either cut two times or cut three times uh. 
it's either this ah, uh, I believe they will cut three times, but uh, like the Mohammad uh, Alarian, a uh, very famous economist, uh, ex CEO of Pinko, the, the largest asset manager of, of bonds. So he, he's quite uh, very renowned and specialized in bond market one. So he says he expect the Feds to cut rates, uh, I think uh, two, two rate cut this year only. So so I think he's quite accurate. So, so I think it's between two or three rate cut. You know, so, but whether it's two or three rate cut, right, it's not a huge difference fundamentally, am I right? Two or three rate cut was the difference, 25 basis point. Uh, but center, mental basis wise, right, if the first rate cut occur on June, then risk, once they, on June, FOMC meeting confirmed cut, then the risk will rocket already, will, will start to recover from then. If June they don't cut, then if they only do two week cut, then it could be, I think that after that is July or August, uh, the next meeting. Uh, then, then, then it will be a later recovery. So both scenario to me, I, I think is, is okay. Ma. If they cut later, it means risk will be depressed for a longer time. Then I'll, I have more time to DCA. So 2024, my strategy is to buy REITs and buy dividend stock. So Ping An, Ling REITs and CFA. These three counters are the one that I'm DCAing uh, this year. So CFA now 6.2% dividend yield. Uh, that, and they pay the dividend quarterly. La. So, so don't need to time it. Lor. Just every month or every quarter DCA. And, and you know that by buying at a basket, right, you're getting a good discount. Because now you're buying at a discount to book value. So the thing is that uh, investors are, are so-called stupid. La, huh? It's come gong, ah, come gong. Uh, come gong in a sense, what? Uh, it's like when the REITs are trading at a premium, at uh, 1.2 times book value, they buy. Now it's at a discount, they, they don't buy. Uh, so, so, uh, so it's a big come gong. Now the discount, but nobody really shouting buy. It's like o only me shouting buy. I think Adam Koo recently has a video on uh, REITs. He also say uh, buy a uh, blue chip high quality REITs. So, so I think, yeah, so I think only me and Adam Koo shouting buy on REITs. I don't really see other uh, Singapore YouTubers shouting buy, buy on REITs. Ah. Yeah, so, so I, I think buying REITs is a contrarian uh, approach, ah, I, I would say. So is, is that example you want to buy, let's say, a condominium for, invest, for investment. So the condo you want to buy maybe is $1 million. You know, it can generate. 5% rental you, you can generate a rental of 50,000 per year. So suddenly you go and check property guru. Wow, now the condominium is trading at 800,000. 20% down from the 1 million you saw a few months ago. That means your rental you now, because it, it can, you feel that you can still rent for 50,000. Now it's like 6.5% rental you. So will you be more interested to buy that condo or will, will you be less interested? So for me, I'll be more interested. But I'm getting a lower price and it's still the same asset. But the thing with Kam Gong people is that there are a lot of them. The condo is down 20%. They say, ah, oh, I won't buy, I don't buy. When the condo is up 1.2 million, then I will FOMO and buy condominium, buy property. So those kind of people that have hurt mentality, they, they, they are doomed to fail. Uh, they, they are doomed to underperform the, the, the stock market. Yeah, so in the end, you want be it property or be it REITs. You, you want to buy when, when it's selling at a discount. Or not, not at a premium. <laughs> yeah. Okay, LY. Why 10-year US builds up to 4.4%? So, uh, if you look at the long-term chart, previously it was also 4.5%. It, it went down to as low as 3.9%, 4% uh, because there was uh, the sentiments uh, was, was that the Fed will cut rates aggressively. Uh, you can go to Market Watch. Uh, Market Watch or CNBC have the chart. So, example, this uh, 10-year government bond. So, it's a long-term bond. So, it reflects the long-term interest rate. So, if the expectation is that rates will remain higher for, for longer, then this number will remain high. That means, Feds will not cut rates aggressively. Then it's 4.4. But if the expectation is that Feds will cut rates like 5, 6, or 7 times, then the, the U will be low. You see, it's as low as 3.9%. So uh, the 10 year U is a reflection of the market sentiments of where interest rate will be in, in, the, in the future. So now the, 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 the expectation is that higher for longer, that we will stay at this rate uh, for, for longer. But 
uh, the way that Singapore reads right, the U is priced right, is also a reflection of the the ten year uh, U because the ten year right is people will compare ma. You buy a ten year rich free bond, it pays you four point five percent. So if I'm buying REITs, right, because REIT, there, there is a capital risk. Right? I buy a 10-year bond, right, government bond, right, there's no principal risk. If I hold for 10 years, it matures, I get back my money. So that, that I won't lose money like, as long as I can hold to maturity and I get 4.5% every year as a base uh, so-called passive income. So if I buy REITs, right, risk, I'm taking on risk because REITs, the price can fluctuate. My only exit of the risk is to sell the risk. So I have the, the exit, the price price risk. Whereas 10 year bond, I don't have the price risk. So risk definitely the yield must be much higher than the 10 year bond. That's why the market is pricing the, the Singapore risk at 6.2%. So you as an investor, you can choose my do you want to buy a risk free US bond for 4.4% yield? But this one, there's also a risk, there's a forex risk. Because the US dollar can weaken, Sing dollar can strengthen, then you lose on the forex. Versus you buy the Singapore uh, risk. You don't have forex risk, you get 6.2% dividend. So the premium is 1.8%. Yeah, so so that, that's a premium. So so the, the premium uh will, 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 will fluctuate. Lah. For for example, right? Uh if the 10 year US treasury note right this goes to five percent for example the market go crazy uh, the highest it went was i think just five uh was uh four point nine percent example so october october it went to as high as five percent that's also where we saw the the reach right uh where was you see the you see uh in two zero two zero where you see it being sold down to the lowest because when you can buy a 10 year US government bond for 5%, your REITs, right, the U must be higher, maybe 6.5 or even 7%, uh, to, to, to let it be a comparable asset. Uh, don't want risk 5%, take risk 6.5, 7%. So, so that's why REITs price uh, has a strong correlation with the US uh, Treasury note. Uh, but usually about 2% premium. Uh, Usually about there lah, two two percent. But it can be one point five percent premium. It can be two point five percent premium. But but in the middle point is a is about two percent premium or to to let's say a ten year risk free U S government bond. And that's how the market will look at it lah. Yeah. So Jeff Lu, Capital Land Invest. Any comments? I did cover Capital Land Invest lah, but I I don't like it lah. It's a half fuck with. Half of it is a is a REIT ETF because it owns Escort la, and all the capital, uh, capital India, capital commercial, all this la. So, uh, is half of the NAV comes from REITs. Another of the half of the NAV comes from the funds that they invest in, which is properties la. Yeah. So, it, for me, I prefer a pure uh, asset manager like like BlackRock. Uh, if I want to invest in an asset manager, in the past there's ARA la. Then, if you want to buy ETF, ETF I'd rather buy a CFA. So, Capital Land Invest, the other time I covered it, the, the U was like 4%. So, I don't think 4% is attractive. I'd rather buy CFA, I get 6.2% uh, uh, dividend U. Yeah. Pixel Spencer, CFA cannot buy. Ah. Wait, undercut you. Ah. Yeah. Okay, la, your price very low. La. Pixel Spencer, I think, think you're, 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 you're okay. okay. Yeah, don't worry, Master is not going. Go, Kim. Thanks for your Milo Ping. It's the go king moment. So let's check out the, the crypto prices. Well, Bitcoin is up quite a bit. The other time I saw was 69k. Now 52k. Uh, uh, starting to push back up already. So I think it's another uh, two more weeks to, to the Bitcoin halving event. Uh, so it's the, it's the 20 something of April. I forget already. Yeah, so now, now we, are, we are pushing back up already. Yeah, wow. Like that. So is wow well, actually wow well, went up quite a bit. Hey, Bitcoin actually up quite a bit eh, over the past year. Yeah, from from sixty five k. So Chicken Genius is wrong. Chicken Genius say it will come down to fifty k and consolidate. 
Yeah, so so chicken genius Coco, but chicken genius Coco, he, he sold all his the Bitcoin at the seventy k level. So this seventy two k level feels like a feels like a resistance. Ah, you see, people tend to take profit at this level. So so it seems like a so called resistance. Yeah, but uh, not much news on, on the Bitcoin already. Lah, I don't expect Bitcoin to go hundred k. Ah, it it might go to eighty k, then it 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 get uh, crashes. I don't know, but Feels pickish, ah. Uh, feels pickish, ah. Uh, feels feel topish already. Yeah. Thanks, go came for the support. What lah? What lah? Uh, RS on. Oh, wow. My uh, body friend. <laughs> uh, welcome. I bought my hundred gram go bar when it was the same price as Bitcoin. Go raise to ten k now, but Bitcoin hundred k. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin is grows much faster than the gold. But gold is like more like a traditional asset lah. Bitcoin, if you think of it at a store of value, is is like a supercharged digital gold bar like that. Yeah, but but gold hold long term okay lah. Hedge against inflation. Yeah, lazy investor, you you also have the gold bar. Waiting for Chinese tech. Chinese tech now, because they they are not rebounding quickly lah. So they they become more like value play. Like you see, uh, ten cent. JD and Alibaba, what they have in common? They pay dividend. They do a lot of share buyback. So now I think there's nothing much the management can do. I remember you are a CEO, uh, chairman of Alibaba, Tencent, JD. People don't buy your stock. Then you cannot do anything, ma. You can only, uh, but your businesses are still solid. Generate a lot of cash. So the management they can only do is pay more dividend, do more share buybacks, and I think that's the best they can do. So I I don't blame the management ah. It's it's the sentiments thing lor for for the Chinese tech. So even the price remain depressed, it is okay. The price don't crash can already. They keep doing share buybacks, keep paying dividend. I I I'm I'm happy lah. Yeah, good guys go to heaven. Bad guys go to Pattaya. Yeah, <laughs> or Pattaya. I I like Pattaya. Pattaya is is the one that got the the wet market all this right. I I very long never go already. Yeah. Usually people like to go the BKK or or, or the Phuket lah, uh, all this. Phuket is all those uh C C activity. But uh, yeah, I, I seldom go, but but I go before I forget already. Yeah. Okay, so I see got what questions that there answer some questions. Then I uh uh go uh. Cameron ML I remember Genting Singapore is their hospitality. No, not their casino business. Is it? No lah, got got the casino lah. If don't have the casino, then nobody buy buy the stock already. The hotel all these ah is is unattractive ah. Yeah. What's up, Enchanted Water? May Tuan coffee order during Qingming holiday increased by more than seven times year on year. Oh, I think uh Qingming, I think they have to soye ah or what ah. That's why that's why ah they they must overnight or something ah. Then they drink a lot of coffee. Is it? I also don't know. But but uh. Coffee business is doing very well because, uh, what is that digitalizing like that? But it's coffeeizing. Chinese right? The culture is tea. In the past, we drink a lot of tea, so coffee is like something new to the Chinese. So the you go to like China right? Uh, old old people, uh, they they usually drink tea one. Only in Singapore, the the old people drink kopi kopi o lah. Then, but in China, people they they drink mostly they drink tea. Oh, tea is a very huge market, but now it's the opposite. The uh, tea is declining. Coffee is rising. That's why Luckin Coffee, Starbucks is booming in in China. But I don't know a lot lah about the like, tea and coffee market. I I'm still learning. So so I might talk about Luckin Coffee and Starbucks, uh, in the future. Well, is China allowed to use uh AWS? No lah. AWS uh cloud uh they, all these they 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 are they don't operate in in China lor because. Uh, your data all this has to be scrutinized by by the CCP. Same as why like Facebook la YouTube ah doesn't operate in China because if you operate there right, you must follow the rules and regulation. You cannot talk bad things about uh SJP. Then your your data must must be stored in China. Then the government anytime can extract your data. In in fact, your data must be connected with the government. The government has. Real time access uh to your data, so these American companies they don't want to comply, they don't want to bow to the CCP. That's why 
they don't operate in, in China. So AWS, la, uh, Azure, la, Google Cloud, uh, they, they don't really operate in, in, in China. Yeah. So, okay. I see you still got what questions there. Are. So, okay, Putra, why did Ping An price drop past weeks? Ping An is still near the $33 level. La. I think it's at the support level. The dividend yield is about 8%. So, so it's not really crashing. La. It's just struggling at the support level. Then uh, recently, there, there's a lot of negative news in the property market, uh, which, which I shared. La. So Ping An, the, the biggest worry is that whether it has to do national service, whether it has to like inject money la, to, to be a major shareholder of Country Garden, buy their bonds. So uh, it, it, the weakness in the price has relation la, to the property market for, for Ping An. But, but I see it as an opportunity la, to, to buy more shares of Ping An and join the 8% dividend. Because like I shared with you in the deep dive, their, their exposure to property is just 4% of their uh, portfolio. Very little exposure, 4% of their portfolio is related to property. So uh, the fears are overblown. Yeah. Okay. Pixel Princess, why you catch all the master the keyword? Ah? Why well, you very smart? Ah? Yeah, Sharon, I think you can trade in Nasdaq or Dow Jones for agriculture futures. I forget the quote. Ah. Futures market, I never play. Ah. But, but yes, ah, you can trade. Uh, some brokers, they allow you to trade futures. Ah. You can bet on corn, you can bet on wheat, you can bet on oil, <laughs> everything. But I, I don't trade the futures market. Futures market, uh, you will be using leverage. It's very volatile, it's very high risk. Yeah. DBS bonus issue. It, uh, DBS XD already, but I have an X bonus. I don't know what's the date for, for X, 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 uh, B. La. Net uh, 7796. Bro, SG Bank is safe. Not everything C price to book. D, uh, it, it's safe. La. You buy, you collect the 6% dividend. You nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. But what I'm saying that it, uh, it's overvalued. So when you buy things that are overvalued, right? Uh, when there's a negative news, you will suffer the downside. Lor. So, for example, when Fed, uh, when the Fed start to cut rates and, and rates normalize, uh, DBS, the earnings will come down. So, I expect DBS, the earnings to come down maybe 5 to 10% uh, by, by the end of the year or in, in, in this work year. Yeah, so, so people don't realize that the DBS, the earnings has peaked and the DBS earnings might, might come down. And they also don't realize that DBS right, is facing a lot of competition from the fintech players that will eat into their non-interest income. Yeah, so, so there's a lot of things that all these uh, YouTubers that are promoting banks, they are not telling you. They are not telling you that DBS will be hurt by the compression in net interest margin. They are not telling you that DBS will be hurt by the competition from all these uh, fintech players. Yeah, so on the balance, because of all this uh, potential negative, you want a margin of safety. You, you want to buy uh, at, at a good valuation. But now, if you buy DBS at, let's say, 33 to $36, I would say the, the valuation is on the high side. You're not getting a good deal. But but nothing wrong uh, if you, let's say, you only invest, your profile is like AK71, you only invest in Singapore market. You don't invest overseas. Then Singapore market, there's very few choices. Uh. It's basically banks and REITs only. But I prefer REITs rather than banks. If I were a pure Singapore investor, I would sell all my banks now at, at this top, uh, so-called top. Uh, and I will use all the money to buy REITs. Uh, I think at this moment, it's not wrong uh, to have a 100% REIT portfolio. Let's say I have a million dollar Singapore stock portfolio. I don't mind taking the $1 million and putting it equally weighted or in, in let's say the, the, the top 10 reads. So example, I have $1 million, I put 100,000. Uh, so I got uh, $1 million, I put 100,000 each into the top 10 reads by, by market cap, for example. So these are the 10 largest weight, weighted reads. Uh. So each of them, I put 100,000. I think if I have a portfolio like this, I will sleep very well at night. And my dividend U will be quite high. You can see that the lowest dividend U is about 5.5%. The highest is 6.8%. So we, we take the average is about slightly more than 6%. Slightly more than 6%. So 
So by putting in, in I get 6% and it will grow. The, in the long run, short term, the, the DPU might be weak in 2024 due to the higher borrowing cost. But uh, in the long run, as interest rate normalize, DPU and NAV should go higher. As the assets, they can raise their rental and, and they hedge against inflation. What's inflation? is the price of rental, the, the, the price of property. Property prices in the long run go, go up because Singapore land is limited. Yeah, so in the long run, I expect maybe 8% to 10% uh, returns if, if I build such a portfolio. Or maybe 6% from, from a dividend and maybe 2-3% from, from in inflation. Also 8 to 9% uh, long-term returns. So that is how I will play the Singapore market. I will, I will sell the banks, I will buy REITs. Uh. So REITs now, right, uh, many people are fearful. They are un uncomfortable to so-called go all in on REITs. But I think uh, now is the time to, to not say all in one shot buy, but, but to all in DCA into REITs. Because if you choose not to buy, let's say you are a Singapore investor, you choose not to buy REITs now, right? Then when you're going to buy REITs, are you going to buy REITs and it's, the index is 1,200, 1,400. Now the index is 1,000. So, so, so it's a clear level la, to be a aggressive buyer of, of, of REITs. That's why I want to talk more about REITs uh, this year. Yeah, because I, 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 for me, right, I'm a value investor. I go where the opportunity is. Yeah, then I think the opportunity is, is uh, in REITs. So. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Ben, Ben K, Master, Lenovo stock worth buying? I don't know that. I, I never really analyzed Lenovo. So, Lenovo, ticker code 992. The P ratio 15 times doesn't look uh, very cheap. Oh, but the price, is, the chart is on the higher. Yeah, it, it's not really crashing. Whereas the others, uh, stocks is crashing. It looks like it's holding up quite well. Four percent dividend. It doesn't on on the grants. It doesn't look cheap. Uh. It, it doesn't look cheap. But but uh, it, it is like a blue chip company. Uh. It's in, in the index. Uh. The market cap is hundred and nine billion. It, it's quite it's a blue chip company. Uh. So so it's not trading cheap. But I don't know enough uh, to to say whether it's is a uh, buy or not. Yeah. Okay. I see. St still got what uh question. Okay. Jackie Lee, thanks for your support. What la, what la, Jackie, what what? Okay. C why that what is CFA? CFA is a read. CFA is this one. Nico Asset Management uh Swiss Trading Asia S Japan Re ETF. So uh CFA is a re ETF. Uh. Yeah, then uh it, it, it has six point two percent dividend U is probably like 20% discount to book value similar. Then uh, is you, the components that you see, that they are top 10, right? It's similar, la, just that they have link reads and embassy uh, read. Embassy is uh, India, India uh, office uh, uh, set. Yeah, but, but it's more Asia focused. Uh, it's more Asia focused. Yeah, that's why you have Hong Kong you, and you have uh, in, in India uh, reads uh, inside this ETF, but it's still very diversified. And it's safe uh, in the sense that it's a uh, C CPF uh, approved. Yeah. Master, can you please cover link reads by uh, Edifa? I, I did cover li link reads. Uh. So those who want to see my coverage, because a lot of people ask me, so I, I make a, a new list already. So you go to my this uh, page, uh, Master Leong page, then you go to the Got Company, Got Talk. So I purposely make this playlist. Then you can see that. Uh, on number four, there's the Ling Reads, Five Tiger General, Hai Di Lao. Then you can see my, my discussion on, on these companies uh, in, in detail. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, Freddy Wong, you buy Ping An. Good, good, good. Goodbye, goodbye. Yeah. Okay, Nassim T, Master, still holding SE and JD? Yes, I'm still holding. So every year, my, my topic will be different. Uh, like, like in... Uh, two one my, my, my topic was meta and alphabet then uh, it rallied then in two two I sold them away for a 20 and 40 percent gain 
Then I took the money I bought into JD and SE. Then this year, uh, JD and SE already up. Uh, I think they're up like uh, 10% and, and 30%. So I'm not adding any more JD and SE, but I'm still holding. But, but this time I did not take profit. So my, my new money, uh, uh, I'll be buying into Ping An, Ling Reeds, and CFA. Yeah, so, so in uh, 2 1. Uh, so in two in two one my, my stock my top pick was Alibaba, oh, which did not do well. Then in two two my top pick was Meta and Alphabet which did well. In two three my top pick was JD and SE which also did well. Then now we are in two four. Oh, time passed very fast. So two four my top pick is Ping An uh, and and, and Ling Reeds, uh. Ping An and Ling Reeds. CFA is more like a, a ETF uh, so not considered a stock pick. Yeah, just that Reeds uh, generally is cheap. So whenever I say I have a top pick, right, I usually put my own money in. Yeah, but, but a lot of people, they remember me for my losses on Alibaba because I'm still losing 200000 on Alibaba. But, but you can look at my track record, like the US market, I also recommended other value picks like, like uh, Disney and PayPal. And, and both of them also did quite well. But I did not put money in uh, because my, my conviction is in the SE and uh, in the JD. So, but a lot of people ask me about it. So I, uh, at $80 level, I did say Disney was an easy buy. So uh, Disney now, uh, wow, up so much, uh, I thought $100 only. Oh, well, now almost 120 I never followed Disney for quite some time. Well, I'm surprised that it, it, it has gone up so much. But I never see any major news. Leh. So, so uh, the coming Disney results, I will cover. Lah. Well, year to date is up 30 but then, So you all remember, you see, I, 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 Disney up uh, 31% so then but cannot buy already la. it's the 52 week high I also did cover PayPal for the US market but PayPal also rallied already so from the lows of about $50 level now it's uh, about 65 uh, up quite a bit uh. let me see the year to date up, uh, up a bit uh, not as much as Disney la. Oh, but, but PayPal uh, I don't know I don't know it. I, I haven't followed it for quite some time already yeah, but, but like I, I said uh, just now, in my page, right, I have the deep dive. So nowadays, I, I don't really cover the US market. Because US market, right, as a value investor, I don't see much bargains. I don't see much bargains. So you, you see, uh, in the past, then I did cover SE, I covered Meta, then I, I covered uh, Alphabet. So I bought into Meta and Alphabet. Then uh, I also covered Disney, but I did not buy into Disney. <laughs> But um, I don't have additional money. I don't have spare money. Yeah, so if you look through my playlist, uh, my, my picks, all of them, most of them did well. But the Tesla <laughs> did not go to $20. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Those who shot Tesla got burned. I myself, I also went short on Tesla and I, did, I lost a few thousand dollars. Yeah, then my Singapore pick, I, I have the Kim Lee, I have the Thai beverage, I have the Sing Song. Uh, then I'll also talk about it. So I will say most of my picks are, are actually quite solid one. Are uh, quite quite solid. Yeah, uh, you all can go take a look. Uh. But but nowadays I won't be covering much of the US market because US market everything feels expensive. Whereas Hong Kong, right? Like, like recently I covered Ling Reeds, uh, uh, ICBC, Hai Di Lao, they are all so cheap, so undervalued. Then the five tiger general, which I'm I'm which I talked about and, and today I uh, is they are, they are all at a discount. So I think now, uh, like REITs uh, and Hong Kong market is where I will cover more. Because uh, for me, I invest, right, it's often I put my money where, where my mouth is also. So when I say buy, I also put my money in. Just that even if I don't do YouTube, right, I'll be doing the same thing. I'll be re researching these companies. Then I feel that it's a great company under where I put my money in. Just that YouTube is that I share my research. I share my thoughts on YouTube. Then it's like a part-time job because people will give me advertising revenue. People will give me tips. Yeah, so so it's a win-win now. So you get you get to see my picks. You get to see my thinking process. Why I think these companies are undervalued and, and why they are worth a buy. Yeah, so it's a win-win now. That's why I really like the YouTube. Yeah, next week is the Songkra, but I, I don't like Songkra. <laughs> you get wet lah. Your your handphone all all, all wet also. Thailand cheap ah. Th Thailand is cheap ah. Yeah. Lee, uh, Jackie Lee Chun Yao, Daily Journal sold 35% of their Baba after Charlie Munger passed on. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, 
but but I can understand uh, because uh, uh, Charlie Munger no longer running the show. They they probably hire a professional manager, and a professional U.S. manager. Most of them would think that China is un uninvestable. So so they they they, they divest is uh, understandable. Why K? Please talk about Starbucks. Uh. yeah, in the future I, I might talk about Starbucks. Uh. I, I did cover before like like the uh, Coca Cola and, and, and Pepsi. Yeah, so Starbucks uh, I, I I like. Yeah okay. Lim CH uh, ML today got news ICBC files petition against the yeah 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 so I, I did cover. So uh, the, the 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 big Chinese banks they they want the the the, the si mao or to liquidate uh, they, they just get back their money. Uh, for the big six banks their exposure to all these property companies, uh, is well managed uh, they already have a provision for it already, uh, in last year and this year. So I don't think the property collapse will be a big impact, be it to CCP or ICBC. They already write off enough position to tank the losses of the uncollectable already. Yeah. Country Garden, I think, gone case already. Uh. But I, I hope that Ping An doesn't go to do national service to save Country Garden. But, but that one I also don't know. I don't have any updates on whether Ping An need me to buy the Country Garden or not. Yeah. Some news say that somehow is the next Nvidia. I I don't know that. I, I don't know. Somehow I I'm not familiar. But mm, yeah, somehow is do do what one. Somehow. Somehow it's a voice and AI. Uh, so or oh, it's a it's a public company S O U N. Uh. I will consider this under high growth tech. Uh. It's a very small company uh. Just two hundred sixty employee. So it's a small cap. I say it's a very speculative stock. Uh. Have to be be careful. Uh. Yeah. What wow. midnight Daniel Wen going for Taiwan for holiday? Good good. Ta Taiwan is good. Taiwan I miss the 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 Ping Lang Mei. So I I I miss the the Xiang Ji Pa and the Feng Mi Nai Cha in in, in Taiwan. Taiwan wow. I miss Taiwan. Taiwan the food wow is amazing. The rural fun. Wow. Wow BTC wow you know how to enjoy a two hour oil massage ah. Go Thailand for massage very good. Mr. Tokomi, you, you also like uh. Yeah. I kick think Sharon is, is a is a troll. Yeah. Yeah, Sharon is a troll. My my moderator ban 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 already. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks for my moderator helping me to, to ban the troll. Sharon, you want to troll, right? You you cannot be so obvious lah. You you must slowly build up, build up. Then then uh, once in a while attack, once in a while attack. You suddenly keep attacking, huh? No, then immediately my moderator will ban you already. Uh, so so thanks for uh, RS and thanks for BQ, or oh, my two moderator RS and, and BQ, which is also my my childhood friend, huh? Oh, then it's so called my childhood friend, huh? Oh yeah, so so thanks for my childhood friend for moderating. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Hope you all enjoy my sharing. So. For me, I, I won't. Sometimes I, I will skip streaming here, here and there. I won't stream like Monday to Friday, such such a strict uh, schedule. Like if, if that day is holiday or there's not much news on the Hong Kong China market, then I might not stream. So don't worry about master. If, if I skip one day or what, it's just just that, that there's no uh, market news. Uh. Lim CH, you also go in China. Okay, hope you enjoy your time in China. Take care all. Good night.